everybody, I'm Robin, and these are my reflections. Oh my goodness, I'm giggling already, and we haven't even started. This is going to be a mess. <laughs> I'm just looking at the, the prompts. Uh, this tickled me so much. So this is a VR video response to Logan at Larkin Legend, completely unasked for, but I had to do it. I had to jump in here because I love Twilight, and I thought that these prompts were so fun and this video that I, I saw on their channel was so entertaining i will link that video down below so what um what it was was logan took quotes from the twilight books and made them into prompts for you know for us to choose tarot decks well not for us to choose for julie and tegan julie at peak blue rose and tegan at cosmic creeper 2 were meant to choose decks they had to like run they had they had the quote and the prompt and then they had like 60 seconds to choose a deck from the shelves and then bring it back and then they showed it i'm not gonna do that i've already seen the prompts i'm not i've already chosen the deck <laughs> so this won't be as entertaining as their video <laughs> i'll make sure as um and link that one down below i would have linked it anyway but there you go i'll link it for you to see it and um i'm gonna i've already got the prompts here i've written them down i've chosen the decks so <laughs> let's get started the first one was bella where the hell have you been, Loka? <laughs> a deck that you have neglected as of late. I'm going with this one. This is the Dolly uh, Tarot. This is very shiny. I don't know if you can see. This is the Dolly Tarot. This is the tuck box that it comes in. It actually comes in this really big, giant box. But um, I couldn't, I can't keep that. I have to put that away because it's way too big for any of my shelves. And I just don't have the space. But I do love this deck, but I haven't used it in a long time. These are the backs. It's very big, but easy to shuffle because the cardstock is really thin. So what I love about this deck and the reason that I got it um, was that this is, I love Salvador Dali's artwork and all of that. And, and then he painted this specifically to make a tarot deck. This is not like a curated art deck. These are his paintings for tarot. He made a tarot deck and this is just it reprinted. So I was really excited to be able to, when they reprinted this, I was really excited to get it. So, but, and I got it. And at the time I didn't have a lot of other decks and I didn't need space. So the big box was kind of a novelty to me. It comes in this gigantic velvet box. That's probably, I couldn't even show it on the screen. It's bigger than any book, bigger than any shelf that I have. So I actually have it in storage and that book is just the same size as the box. It's huge also in storage, which means I don't, I can't reference it when I want to reference it to use the deck. Luckily, the cards are pretty recognizable. Um, I've been using it again lately. I saw somebody using it on Instagram, I think. And I was like, I need to get this out. You know, I have it. I need to use it. But definitely has been neglected in my collection, mostly because I think it was like so big. And um, it does come in that smaller tuck box. So I just took the tuck box out of the giant box and put it on the shelf. So that way I can, it'll be like within... Cause you know, out of sight, out of mind. You know what I mean? You put something away, you forget you have it. <laughs> well, I do anyway. I don't know about you. So that's why this one has been neglected. But I do think it's beautiful. I also sometimes don't use it because of the lack of titles on it. Um, the court cards and the majors all have titles, but the minors don't. So like this is the five of wands. But it, you know, you just have to kind of know that or discern that. And sometimes in a reading, it could be a little bit like if I'm in another space and I'm not really paying very close attention, I might not. I can kind of, I, this one I can kind of tell. This one I can kind of see it's the Six of Swords. But some of them, sometimes I get a little confused. I can see that's the Three of Swords. I can see that's the Two of Wands. I guess this is the Two of Swords, the Ace of Cups. I guess maybe it's not as bad as I'm trying to make it out to be in my head. <laughs> three of uh, Wands, Four of Wands. Yeah, I can see it. I need to I need to just get it out and use it more. It's definitely a deck that's been neglected. And so that's why I chose it for this prompt. It's probably my most neglected deck in my collection. And this is the Dolly Tarot. I, I don't know who publishes this, but it's very it's very nice quality. The card stock is very thin though. So if you if that's a problem for you, be aware of that. But other but they're giant cards, so I can see the paintings. Um it's clearly printed. And the guide, the guidebook comes in German and English, and it's beautiful paper, but it's huge, man. It's really big. <laughs> so anyways, that's the Dolly Tarot, my most neglected deck right now. Prompt number two. This is the skin of a killer, Bella. A deck with bling. 
of some sort or flashy art. My blingiest deck is going to be this one. This is the traditional Korean tarot by Bana, the holographic edition. This is the only holographic deck in my collection. Let me get it out of the box. Okay, that was a struggle. Okay, <laughs> you can see that the, the box is very, very pretty and blingy. Um, came with these extra cards. Somehow I lost, this had four seasons and somehow I lost the fourth season. I don't know. So I have like, I'm guessing that's winter, spring, and summer. I'm missing fall. I don't know. Or maybe this is fall and I'm missing summer. I don't know. But I don't know how I lost them, but I lost one. <laughs> I completely lost one. All right. So this, these are the cards. Um, the cards are a little tall. So I would say a normal tarot deck probably stops about here. So they're taller and they sparkle. They have this like star lamination. See that? Look at that. Ugh. yes. Come through sparkles. Um, I love I love glittery deck. I do. This is still in order, and you'll and because this is because I put it back in order because I realized that it's hard for me to tell what card I'm looking at, and because the titles are written here in Korean instead of English, um, I need to get to know this deck a whole lot better before I can use it like this. I have the paper version with the English titles on it, and I don't have any problems using that one, um, but for some reason with this one, I have a hard time telling what I'm looking at. So I put it back in order so that I know which card is what, but considering um, swapping out to these cards for my deck and walk, cause I keep the cards out on my desk and um, the light hits where, where they sit. I think they would be really beautiful instead of the decks, instead of the cards that I'm using to use these instead, just, you know, just to have something pretty to look at since it has to sit out there for 10 days, you know? But this is my sparkliest, most blingy deck. Another reason I don't use this one so much, look how beautiful it is, is that um, these sparkles, while very gorgeous here on camera, and even when the light hits them, they're very pretty in, in real life, it's very cloudy. And I have vision problems. Like my eyes are not that great. So um, that lamination makes it hard for me to see. Sometimes I can't see past the lamination to the image. So there's that as well. But this deck is great. I use the paper one in the summer. This is my favorite card. I use the paper one this summer a lot. Yeah. I like this, how these elongated cards because everything just looks like it keeps going. So I want to be able to use this more. And I think that once I, you know, get to know the deck better and I just know the cards, I can use it. I'll be able to use it without the titles. So that's the goal for the meantime deck and, it's being relegated to the deck and walk i believe and this is the traditional korean tarot the holographic edition my blingiest deck definitely the blingiest deck in my collection look at all of that bling number three hold on tight spider monkey <laughs> a deck that has carried you through hard times none other than the super lunaris tarot this is my favorite tarot deck it is the one that i use when i'm having hard times if I wanna read tarot during a hard time, I will always reach for this one and nothing else. There's nothing else that I would trust in a hard time. Um, it's, I don't know, this is my deck. This, you know, <laughs> if I had a best friend and a tarot deck, this would be it. So I, I couldn't pick another one for this prompt. If I can tell you there have been many a hard time where I've used this deck to read and it has been supportive and kind um, and honest, but also loving and gentle. And um, it's given me exactly what I need at whatever time I, I need it. So I've never been let down by this one. So, and I trust it. So this is my um, Super Lunaris Tarot, the deck that's carried me through hard times. Beautiful deck. The next one is original <laughs> Renesmee. A deck that's hard on the eyes, but you love it anyway, or a deck with really unnerving imagery. So the way that uh, Logan explained this, and I didn't know this, apparently um, the original Renesmee doll that they used in the movie was very disturbing and the actors couldn't even deal with it or something. I know that the one that they put in the movie was like some CGI craziness. It looked a mess. Like. <laughs> 
to mess with CGI. I feel like the CGI in that movie was a little bit off-putting anyway, <laughs> because even the wolves were a little off. Like everything was a little bit off in that movie. I don't know who did the CGI. It wasn't the best. But anyways, I'm just going to give a little bit of a trigger warning. It's very gruesome. So if you don't like blood and gore and all that, maybe skip ahead a little bit. This, that can be a little bit much. You know what I mean? Like it's a little much. It's definitely um, my most disturbing imagery in my collection. Okay, so it's a vampire deck. So the B stands for vampires and um, done by Alejandro Colucci in this sort of photo manipulation, um, I don't even know what all this is like a collage photo manipulation style. It's interesting. Um, it feels a little bit pop culture as if he took some gothic vampire movies and then, um, you know, manipulated them to make these to make these cards. It reads fantastically. I use it to do political readings um, at the moment, but I think I could probably use it for any kind of reading that was like a, I think it would make a good shot if people like darker if you are a person who likes a darker deck for shadow work I think this could work um also if you are a person who prefers a darker deck just a vibe in general like during this time of year I think that this is a nice deck but it is it, the imagery as you can see is very gruesome so you know be careful with that especially if you're reading for other people <laughs> Um, and they can see the cards. But yeah, this is definitely my most disturbing deck. In my collection, this is the most disturbing one I have. I've been considering getting the Tarot Z. I know people keep telling me that it is is good. And then I had other I had someone recently tell me that this one was the better one. But most people say that the other one is the better one. So I don't know. I like this one a lot, but it does it is a little much for me sometimes. So Currently, I'm looking for another deck for my political readings, just so I can get a break from this. I tried, um, I tried a different deck. It didn't work out, so I have another one that I'm gonna try. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But for right now, this one is is holding strong. I really love the strength card. So yeah, this one is really great. It's really good, and the way that they build up um, the story in the guidebook, the way that Charles Harrington builds up the story in the guidebook and weaves the world is really great as well. So I like this deck a lot. I will, it's, it's a way outside of my comfort zone, but so is um, the politics in my country right now. So <laughs> it works for that for me. So that is the Tarot V and uh, this is, you know, a mass market deck you can buy wherever you buy your tarot deck. So I love the backs of these. Oh my goodness, I love the backs. But the um, box was too much for me. I couldn't do it. So I went ahead and got rid of it and just put it in this pouch. Prompt number five is every second I'm with you is about restraint and you're fragile. A deck that you're afraid to use because it's so damn flimsy. And that for me is going to be the Delos Tarot. Um, this is a second edition, I believe. This is the borderless edition. I picked this up watching Three Girls, One Deck, and that someone in the comments, it was alive, and someone in the comments said um, that it was for sale again. It had been out of print for a while. And I was like, oh, okay, let me go check it out because I'd heard Julie from Peekaboo Rose talk about this deck so much, you know, and I was interested in it, but it had been out of print. And so it had been unavailable to me. And so I just, when I saw that it was, when I saw them mention that it was on sale, I went and checked on Etsy and it was very inexpensive. I think they were selling this for like $30, no shipping. And it was coming from like Korea or something. It's definitely more now, but at the time they had it really low. I don't know if that was like an introductory, like pre-order or something. So it came and I think it's adorable. I really do. And I would use it so much more, but this cardstock is literally paper it feels about as thin as if i took a piece of printer paper and put some packaging tape over top of it it would feel like this and st i'm scared to use this <laughs> not only am i scared to um crush the cards but also i'm a little bit nervous about cutting my hands i've cut my hands before using really thin sorry i'm blocking the cards using really thin paper and um, I think I just, now I just get nervous about that. I don't want paper cuts. They hurt really badly. <laughs> and 
And so, um, yeah, I, I use this with caution. <laughs> I am very careful with it and I don't use it anywhere near as much as I probably would if it had thicker cardstock. If it was, um, if it was on like a cardstock rather than a laminated paper, I would use this deck a lot. It's very pretty. Um, I love I love the imagery and the colors. I like the artwork. It's pretty. It's fun. It's funky. It's textured. It's right up my alley. But the cardstock, y'all, the cardstock. Like, yes, this is me, brokenhearted over this cardstock. <laughs> I do use it sometimes, but rarely. Very much, very rarely. So it definitely is the only deck in my collection that I think is so damn flimsy that I'm afraid to use. This is probably the only one. Um, I have some flimsy decks, but this is the most, this, I've never felt a deck this thin. Even like when I buy playing cards from like cheap places, I, they're not this thin. This is very, very thin, but still a beautiful deck and it shuffles great because it's so thin. I'm just, like I said, nervous about cutting my hands. So that is the Delos Tarot, the borderless edition. But even though this card stock is so thin, I think it's cord because I haven't gotten a bow. If you can notice, it's not bowed at all. And I've been riffle shuffling it because I'm scared to overhand it because I'm scared I'm going to cut my hands. So, yeah. And it riffle shuffles okay. It gives you that flop, floppy shuffle, you know. Um, so maybe I shouldn't be scared, but I am. I absolutely am. This box, though, is on point. This is the thickest tuck box I think I own. It's very, very thick and sturdy and i'm like how did they get this box so thick but the um cards are so thin i don't know but i do love this deck it's very pretty but like i said i'm very careful with it and um i am a little bit nervous to use it because of the flimsiness this is the only one i this is the only one i was like i don't have anything like, oh wait no nope. the delos <laughs> So that's, that's my answer to that prompt. Okay, the next one is, you nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> a deck with a funny, unusual, or unfortunate name. Um, this was another one. I actually had two that could have fit in this category. This is the one I picked. This is the World Cloud Tarot or the Happy Toast deck. Unfortunately, the unfortunate part is I don't know the name of this tarot. I'm not sure if it's called the World Word Cloud Tarot. I keep saying world cloud, but it's word cloud <laughs> tarot or the happy toast deck. I'm not sure which is the name. So that's what's unfortunate about this. And I, and I don't know if I will ever, and I don't know if I'll ever be sure. Um, <laughs> it's those are the max. but I like the deck. Uh, it's fun. It, it's a word cloud, you know, with different words for you to scribe for. And then these adorable little images. And I think it's beautiful. And it has at the bottom, um, I think these are like golden dawn uh, keywords, but then there's all these words here that are that could be meanings for the cards, and you can scry. It's a, I think it's a fun way to add keywords to cards, in my opinion. And this is nice thick um, cardstock. I could see someone using this as like a beginner deck. I got this off of Kickstarter. I got the lowest, um, the lowest package. So this is the the like basic edition, I guess. They have other editions that are like more better quality, I think, or whatever. I, I think this one is a very good quality. I didn't have any problems with the quality of the stack. So, I mean, it comes in a tuck box. I like tuck boxes because they take up less space. I think these little people are so freaking adorable. <laughs> they make me smile so much. And I love scrying for the keywords to see which one pops out at me today. There's so many on the cards, so it's always something different. I'm always weaving a new story, and I think that these are fun. Um, but <laughs> it's unfortunate that I may never know what the actual name of the deck is. <laughs> so there's that. And again, this is the either Word Cloud Tarot or the Happy Toast deck. <laughs> By I have no clue who. <laughs> Prompt number seven, the fetus isn't good for Bella, a deck with an ugly baby on at least one card or a deck with the ugliest baby you've ever seen. Oh my goodness, Logan, I went through so many decks trying to find an ugly baby. This is the one, <laughs> this is the one that I found. <laughs> Look at him, <laughs> he's very ugly. This is from the zombie tarot, zombie baby. Um, there are a few zombie children in this deck, but Logan asked for an ugly baby. So I had to find the baby. So this is the page of wands. He is eating 
I have no clue. Somebody's femur and um, I, definitely the ugliest baby, I think, in my collection. I probably have other ugly babies. I don't actually think that the babies on the sun card are generally ugly. I, they're fine to me. <laughs> so I, I went through a lot of decks and then this one came to mind and I was like, I bet you this one has an ugly baby. And this is the ugly baby. This is the only a baby zombie in the deck. All the others are, all the others are children. So I was lucky that there was at least one baby in there. And that is from the zombie tarot. And the last one is you imprinted on my daughter, a deck that was love at first sight. Oh, the vampires, the tarot of vampires. This is by Charles Harrington, illustrated by Craig Mayer. This is a Llewellyn deck. I was in love with this deck before I even got it. Um, I think if you, I did a walkthrough. If you've seen it, you know that I was freaking out. Um, but to be honest, I heard about this deck on YouTube. I can't remember exactly who said it now. But someone on one of their videos said that Benabelle when was talking about her friend making a vampire deck, a new vampire deck. And my ears perked up because I love a vampire deck. I love vampires. I love vampire lore. And I was like, oh, a new vampire deck? Let me go see. Because at the time, I only had one vampire deck. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I want another vampire deck. I went and looked at, I scrolled through Benabelle's um, Instagram until I found her posts on the vampire deck. And, um, that led me over to the artist's Instagram page. And I, you know, followed the artist and I was following the artist for, I want to say about a year, just commenting on all of his posts on this deck, like loving all of the images. I mean, it was a while. It was months and months and months. It may have been a whole full year. That was back when they were still calling this deck the, the working title was the Terra of the Internal Night, I believe. And then they changed it to Terra of the Vampires and they put it up for pre-order. I pre-ordered it immediately. I It was like six months before it released. I had it pre-ordered and ready to come. It came early. I was so excited to get it. I was in love with this deck before I even had it. Like I already knew I was going to love it. I was already so into it. Like just the fact that there was going to be a modern vampire deck with that looked like the movies and the TV shows and stuff that I like to watch. Um, these, the, they felt tortured. They felt almost, you know, like they were trying to live a human life. And I loved the artwork. It was right up my alley and I still love the deck. It's been a year or two now we've had it and I still love it. Every time I look at it, I smile. I love every image. I love the guidebook. I love the cards. I love the deck. So this is um, definitely was a love at first sight. And that is the tarot of the vampires by Charles Harrington and Craig Mayer. And that was the last prompt. So thank you to Logan at Lark and Legend for creating these prompts. They are fantastic. It was so much fun to go through and try to pick the decks. And then even just well, while I was reading those quotes over and over again, it was just making me smile. So <laughs> thanks, Logan. And thank you to um, also Julian Teagan. Thank you to you all for <laughs> watching me ramble on about these decks. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. And if you want to see more from me, you can subscribe. I release videos every few days regarding tarot and oracle and i would love to have you the links in the description box below will be for logan tegan and julie's video as well as if you like these types of videos i will put in the description box below my playlist for other videos that i've done other uh video responses that i've done to, to different tags if you want to see more also down there will be links for where you can pick up the decks and until i see you guys next time stay safe and be blessed bye bye